Um, well, I was saying this team is like a blank page right now, and I think this was like our first uh, little written part um, of what we're seeing with this team this year. I think this game was indicative. It was a one-possession game. Um, it seemed to be like that the whole game. I'm, I'm actually really happy with some of the things I saw from this group defensively because I think they showed they're capable of doing um, some really great things defensively to limit a team to 51 points um, you know, and do it with only 11 turnovers, I think. Um, that's something that we'll learn from because the turnovers we did have, that's the flip side of it, having an inexperienced team, a lot of players that haven't been in those situations before. I think you saw um, that we need we need to get better at that. And you can only get better at it if you're in those situations. So um, th some of the turnovers we had towards the end and in crucial situations were really vital. But those are things we're going to learn from. And hopefully as we continue um, to write that, like I said, like that blank page with this group being so new um, with experience on the floor um, grow from. Amy, you alluded to it in your opening statement, but do you look now at this non-conference, the pre, we'll, we'll call it before conference games, as the opportunity for these players that didn't have experience now to get it and then to implement you know, a system that you want to see? Ex yes, exactly. I think our non-conference schedule is really going to challenge us. Um, you know, we, we have a quick turnaround. You know, we play another game Friday. I think we're going to see very similar things that we saw tonight. And I think it's only going to help us uh, prepare for conference. And, and, you know, you can't get experience. When you, the only way you get experience is by getting out there and doing it. And this is really our first um, outing. But like I said, I saw some, some really good things. And I think what, one thing we've always done pretty well at Drexel, and we take great pride in our defense. And I think that's something you saw tonight as a group. Um, they really buy into and will continue to get better at. Amy, uh, a lot of possessions for you guys offensively went deep into the shot clock. Uh, are you okay with that? Are you are you looking for more patient? You know, we're going to take a lot of shots with five, four, three seconds left. Would you like to see more shots earlier in the shot clock? How did you feel sort of about the pacing of the offense? I think that pacing a lot due to the, what um, they did on defense, a lot of matchup, you know. So you want to make sure you're not taking quick shots, you know. So and making sure they're – I always say taking shots that you can make and that, that are hard to take. And I think you, I think we did – the clock did go down a little bit at times, but I think that was also something we were looking to do to make sure we got good looks at the basket. And, you know, the one thing that's a little hard, you know, when you're playing against a team that plays a lot of zone, and we know it because we run – a zone, a matchup, is that you can't really predict who's going to get the shot. So we really wanted to make sure we were looking to get some high percentage shots and um, work on some things. But yeah, I think at times, the thing I loved is I saw two of our guards rebound um, the heck out of the ball. You know, it was not, it was so great to see um, Amaris and Grace. You know, I, it doesn't surprise me. They do that really well, but they were definitely um, on the floor getting those rebounds and giving us other possessions on the offensive end. Um, and then I guess, you know, you watched Amaris Baker step up tonight. I, I saw her do some things that I'm excited about because I think she showed um, in, in those situations she wants the ball in her hands and she's capable of making a play. Hey, Coach. Uh, two quick questions about uh, Grace. Uh, number one is that she played uh, all 40 minutes tonight. Is that something that we should expect to see consistently? Yeah, I think um, – it is something you're going to see. I don't know, 40 minutes. I'd love to be able to give her some breaks. But um, when you watch Grace out on the floor and what she does for us, you know, she is conditioned herself to be in a position where she wants to be on the floor. And in those moments, from a defensive standpoint, rebounding and just being our leader, a floor leader, um, you, you see what she's capable of doing. I, I would definitely like to see that rotate and give her a couple breathers throughout, throughout the time on the floor. But tonight, just the way the game was going, and it was a little bit earlier, we, it was a slower type game in some ways on the offensive end. So I think we were able to kind of stay that pace. But I thought she was pretty productive for the time she was on the floor. For my second question, so we saw kind of her leadership. She was bringing, you was talking, vocal, pointing, organizing. Uh, what did you kind of notice and take away from the leadership that she brought? Especially, you know, with Hedda and Brooke, who are, you know, grads also kind of on the floor. Her kind of, despite being an underclassman, kind of taking control of organizing situations. I think Grace is. Um you know, we talk about Drexel point guards. She kind of fits that mold. You know, somebody who is, is leading on the floor, not only in what she does from production, but just, you know, the floor general. And she really comes from a pedigree where um, she knows how important that is. And and just recently, obviously, having had a Nihil on staff, um, she works every day with Grace and works on situations and, and being that person that knows what's happening. And we're really going to need a lot of that from Grace. Even, you know, I think a lot of people forget this team. When you talk about players, Grace has the most experience from a minute standpoint 
um, from last year's team as a returning starter. You know, so we have had uh, some other players, but from a time standpoint and experience on the floor, Grace is really that person. So she's really, you could see it tonight just in the way she kind of got in the, you know, in the groove with what we did. And I think you're going to see that more as this team develops. And, you know, I'm excited because I think you're going to see a lot more out of some of the players that maybe you didn't see a lot of. Brooke Mullen, uh, we put her in the situation tonight to take shots and have the ball in her hands in crucial um, moments, and that's not going to change. I have total confidence in her doing that. I think um, what you're going to see is someone who that was in her role you know, before she was here. So for us, that's going to change, and I think she's going to get comfortable with that. I thought about it. As I know when I was watching the video, so let me make an, uh, you know, she, she's been in um, town this week. And the one thing I will say about Kishana Washington, obviously um, all her, her accolades and, and what she's done for those programs speaks um, for itself. But my, I think my favorite thing, spending the time with her this week, all she cared about was how she was going to make this team um, ready for what they were going to see this year. You know, she was there talking to the players, being involved as an alum, um, and being part of it. And, and to me, that makes me so proud because that's like what our program's about. But she wasn't really worried about that. She was worried about how, how can I make this team better for the week I'm here? You know, how can I help them um, be ready for their first their next game? So, yeah. But it was a great, I mean, a great night for um, Drexel Women's Basketball and Drexel Athletics to be able to retire um, a jersey of someone who um, had such an impact on the program. Uh, I was so proud, you know, very proud. In terms of, like you mentioned, the you know uh, the learning factor of playing in tight situations, and you can only you know you can only simulate it, and they've got to go through it. Game ending with this. So, how do you take tonight's experience? And I mean, it's sort of literally like, how, like, is it just we're going to watch that last minute on film forty times? Is it situational press? That practice stuff is it just you just have to just do it? Like, how do you? Okay, you've had that experience, and how do you like translate that into actually helping them learn? From I think it's like obviously I think they're going to remember. I mean, I can I'm going to remember the possessions that you know were crucial um, with the turnovers. But I think it is continuing to practice that and and you do it because I think the consistency comes with just getting the experience. Obviously, the in-game experience now, but then reiterating that at practice and, and doing the same situation. So we're in a practice, the sense of urgency to get to the spots, to run the plays and and know who you're looking for and everyone be ready. And I think those are things, you know, I felt like tonight you could see a little bit of the inexperienced ones hiding a little more, I think, in those moments. And I say hiding, like, you know, someone who has that, I think, steps up and is like, I know what we're doing. I know exactly what we're doing and what we're doing. And I think that part, we're still, we're going to get there. I feel like this group, I'm really excited to see because they do, they come to, they work really hard. So I know just because of the fact, the way they show up, that we're going to get better in those areas. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.